Hey there, welcome back. More hypothesis testing, and this time we're gonna end up doing proportions. Hypothesis testing involving proportions. Okay, this is for statistics, beginning statistics. Let's take a look at my um, camera that I've got. I've got a couple problems for you today. And as you can see, our first one, we're looking at uh, data values, critical numbers, and p-values as well. And just like in confidence intervals, um, the score we're going to look at is not a, not a T, it's a Z. So just like it, confidence intervals. So um, we also have to check the conditions. So conditions, uh, one, you get NP greater than or equal to five, two, NQ greater than or equal to five, so you got to figure out what your N and P are. Mm, let's see, in 2003, 41.6% of the internet users preferred DSL. Oh my gosh, that's all the, <laughs> not very fast back. Back then it might have been fast, but right now, not now. Um, random sample of 1,000. Okay, so 1,000. So what we're going to do is figure out my P, which is right there. There's my P. And um, so we're going to go 1,000 times 43% uh, or 0.43. Uh, that equals to 430. No problem. Great equal to 5. And this one here would be 1,000 and 1 minus P. So 100% subtract 43%. That leaves you 57%. Well, it's really the leftover. 430 is saying over here uh, that they prefer DSL, and the leftover of 1,000 would say they don't prefer. So this would be 570, but still greater than equal to 5. So then we can say approximately normal. So we can continue with the problem. So this is what you'll end up doing. Um, you're going to find what is called the um, uh, Z crit again, Z crit, uh, Z data, and the p value for proportions. If you want to do the bell shaped curve, which is called the critical value method, sometimes I call it the traditional method, you still have 0, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. And you need all three of these to be, well, actually those two to be able to figure that out. P-value stands alone. And so I'm in, uh, I need to set up my hypothesis test. So H sub naught and H sub A. And so what we've got here is that the proportion, the population proportion, that's going to be lowercase p, um, test whether it has decreased. So... Back then, it is 41%. You'd think now it decreases because there's not very many DSL users because it's all more high speed. I would think it decreased as well. So it also shows this. You see the 350? So out of the 1,000, so this is X is equal to 350, and my N is equal to 1,000. So you remember P hat? P hat, P hat is equal to X over N, which is 350 over 1,000. You're gonna need that. And decreased means here, increased, not D, that's decreased and this is greater than or equal to. Uh, this is a left tail. And decrease from 40, um, um, oh, I don't know what I, why I did this. Look at this. This should be 43%. You're probably saying, what did he get the 43% from? This should be 41.6%. Silly me. It's still greater than, I want to do it right though. 
it's still greater than So what I got is uh, 416. And this is the leftover from 100. So this one here, if I subtract this from 100, uh, we end up having 58.4%. Uh, so 584. It's still good, but I want to do it right. Okay, now, um, so what I want is the uh, critical number comes from the table. Uh, oh, my alpha, looking for my alpha. I don't have it. So if alpha is not given, generally speaking, most textbooks say pick 0, 0 0.05. If alpha isn't given, 0 0.05 is the one you want to use. Okay, so. Uh, this is a one tail, one tail alpha is 0 0.05, and so I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom, 1.645 is a Z, 1.645. So I have 1.645, but this is a left tail, so it's got to be negative. So negative 1, negative 2 right here, negative 1.645. Shade to the left. Now I'm going to find my data value and my p-value. Comes from the calculator. Hit the stat button, back into tests again. But it's a one prop, one proportion uh, t-test. If we had time, we'd do a two proportion t-test, but uh, we probably won't in this course. But one prop Z test, this one right here, hit enter. And now, so you're going to put in your piece of knot. Your piece of knot, uh, this would be, uh, here it is, this would be 4, 1.6%. Uh, this is your P knot, 4, 1.6%. Uh, your P knot. So, um, you don't put in the percent, you have to put in a decimal, just to, so that you know. You don't put in percents, you have to put the decimal version of that. 0.416. Now here's where your X over N comes in. Our X is 350. Our N is 1,000. Which one of these do we want to pick? Uh, I think it was a decrease, less than. Okay, so it's the middle one. And we go down to calculate, and we have a, um, that's a data value, so negative 4.23. We got a negative 4.23. You got a p-value uh, is 0 0.012, four zeros, and then you've got a one and maybe another one right there. So significantly less than alpha, no problem. That is way over here. This is your negative 4.23. That's in the reject region. So that's what we do, we reject, and it's what? Reject the null, every time. It's always about the null. So if we reject the null, null's right here. We reject this. That means we're embracing this. We're accepting it. it. Looks like there's enough evidence to show that's decreased, and that's what we were trying to show. Looks like it appears there's enough evidence. show that the percentage of uh, internet users who prefer
DSL has decreased since uh, 2003. So there's a lot of uh, similarities to the themes between uh, the mean and the proportion in terms of hypothesis testing. And uh, one more here. So we'll take a look at this one for a proportion. Let's see, a national survey reports that uh, between this time frame, 4.8% of persons age 12 or older used a prescription pain reliever. So uh, that looks like my P naught is equal to 4.8%. Let's change that to a decimal, 0 0.048. Looks like I might need an X, I might need an N. All right, uh, it looks like a random sample is going to be 900. And 54 was my X. And I'm going to have, uh, let's see, alpha is 0 0.01. Mm, what else do I need? Uh, I'm going to have a hypothesis test. And because it's a proportion, instead of a mu, we have lowercase p. And we think it has increased. Now, the reason why I might think it's increased over 4.8, if you look 54 out of 900 and you look at its a decimal version, 54 out of 900, uh, 0 0.06 is actually bigger than 0 0.048. So that's 6% into versus 4.8%. Yeah, there's been an increase based on that sample. So we think it's increased, this is less than or equal to, than 0 0.048, 0 0.048. This is a right tail. Shape curve. Zero, one, two, three, one, two, three. We need a, a data. We need a crit. We need a p value. Okay, the crit comes from the table. It's an alpha and a one tail. Point zero one, one tail, point zero one is right here. And we're going to go, since it's a Z that we're looking for for proportions, we go all the way down to the bottom, and I see 2.326. 2.326, and because it's a right tail, it's positive. This is your crit. You shade to the right. Uh, data value and P value come from your calculator. So clear that. Go stat and tests, one down to one prop Z test. And we're gonna input our information, which P naught is 0 0.048. Uh, X over here, uh, I have X bar right here. That's silly of me. That should be plain old X. I'm fixing my mistake. So not X bar, that should be plain old X. You probably knew that when I made that mistake uh, a few minutes ago. So X and P naught, that looks good now. I'm gonna go down here. Let's see, this should be 54, this should be 900. Uh, I want the greater than, because it's always the alternate that I'm looking for, no equal sign, to make a choice. Let's do a little calculation. I get a Z of, let's see, data 1.68, and this one is a P value of 0.0, Four six, I guess. Four six one. Okay, two point three two six. Gosh, that is real close. Oh, excuse me, one point six eight. My mistake. Uh, it was right here. Okay, this is your data, and this one happens to fall in the don't reject region. It's a little different now. So there, even though that it it looked like it went up, because remember, p hat was equal to. 54 over 900, which is 6%. That's higher than 4 point. But statistically speaking, it wasn't high enough to say without a shadow of a doubt, which I have a doubt because it could have been those 900 
they were doing more of it than some other random sample of 900. So because the data value is over here, this is a don't reject in, in here, don't reject. You're gonna say uh, don't reject or fail to reject, don't reject. And what are you um, doing here, which one? It's the null, don't reject the null. So we're not rejecting this. So we're not, this doesn't look like it's gonna be true. We're not gonna reject this. So there, there isn't enough evidence to show this. There is not enough evidence to uh, determine or show that or conclude that the percent of 12 plus year olds um, use of prescription, that's not per prescription, um, pain relievers, has increased over time. Something to that effect. Okay, so those are two good problems. One was to reject the null, the other one was don't reject the null, and you can see the difference in the wording at the end. On, um, and uh, that's for the proportion. So that concludes, uh, for us anyway, chapter nine. And um, the next uh, thing we'll take a look at is um, comparing two means, comparing two means, and that's in chapter 10. Okay, uh, be safe until next time.